Hello everyone, my name is Alexandre Aliu. I am an electrical engineer from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. Today, I will introduce a very interesting project that's under development at the Photonics and Instrumentation Laboratory from the UFRJ in partnership with Petrobras Company. The title of my presentation is Optoelectronic Sensor Applied to Flow Rate Measurements on Oil and Gas Industry. I decided to split my presentation on a brief summary introduction, objective, methodology, results, conclusions, and acknowledgements. Well, the FPSO vessels began its history in 1977. At its core, they facilitate the processing and storage of oil and gas at sea, extends for floating, production, storage, and offloading. These vessels are used extensively by the offshore industry and have become one of the primary methods of oil and gas processing and storage. In our particular case, we will approach about the flare systems, which are a combustion stack employed to burn off excess gases that can't be processed, and also the ones that need to be eliminated during emergency shutdown in power plants. They must be safe and reliable systems in order to guarantee the security of the employees that's working inside these areas. Well, however, these relief systems are also a huge source of CO2. Besides contributing to global warming and climate change, the burning of natural gases is considered a waste of valuable, non-renewable energy resource. Hence, the need to quantify the gas volumes correctly and accurately is evident. But it's really difficult because of the rangeability of the flare going from 2 meters per second until 30 meters per second during emergency shutdown. The objective of our project is to develop a four meter based on three pillars, fiber break grating, known as FBG, cross correlation, and the heat wave travel time technique. First of all, we need to understand what is a FBG. Well, a FBG is an interferometric pattern created whenever a ultraviolet laser focuses on a specific length of the optical fiber, in our case, silica fibers. Uh, this focus creates a periodical modulation of the refractive index inside this core. Here in this video, we can understand better how it works. We have the focus of the ultraviolet laser going inside a specific length of the core. In our case, eight millimeter. We have the core, the cladding, and the coating. When an FBG receives a spectrum going through its core, just a narrow part is reflected and the complementary is transmitted. Hence, now this FBG is sensitive to strain, which means deformation and temperature. So we can measure the strain over the time and also the temperature. The advantage is that we also can multiplex many sensors inside only one optical fiber. In this case, five FBGs are multiplexed in only one optical fiber. They may measure the temperature at different times, different positions with only one sensor. And another advantage of FBG sensors is that they present electromagnetic interference immunity, which means that they can be applied in environments that are controlled against electricity. Another technique employed is the cross correlation. It's a mathematical operation used to measure the similarity between two signals, which are shifted from each other. Uh, actually, it is an integral, and we have to multiply, to multiply the signals that are shifted from each other. For instance, let's suppose that we have two time series. They are similar with each other, but they present a small delay between them. Our interest is to calculate and determine this delay. How we perform, we apply the cross correlation. The cross correlation, when it's performing and this time, 
it's approximately zero because they're not similar with each other once they are delayed. However, in this case, more specifically half of P, the cross correlation is maximum, approximately one, which means that they are delayed for half of P seconds in this case. And this is the amount of time that we want to calculate in our system. If we keep having calculating this cross correlation, we will perform all the results, the C point and the D point. But in our case, this is the scenario that we want to achieve and calculate. So here we can see the calculation in real time of the cross correlation. Well, now we will talk about the heat wave travel time. We have a wind tunnel, a heat source, which can be controlled and the airflow going through this wind tunnel. The idea here is that we perform a variation of the temperature inside the wind tunnel. The airflow warms up, so it increases its temperature and go through the FBG1 until the FBG2. However, this heat dissipates itself as long as it's go throughout the wind tunnel. And when the airflow passes through the FBG1, it has a different temperature than when it passes through the FBG2. Another point to note here is that they have a distance well known. So, if we have the distance between the sensors and we perform the cross correlation to calculate the amount of time that the airflow needed to go from the FPG1 to FPG2, we can calculate the velocity and consequently the airflow. That's the heat wave travel time technique, also known as TOF or time of flight. Our results. In order to perform tests with the proposed sensory methodology, a wind tunnel was also employed. The wind tunnel here is presented as a flow controller, the turbine, and the heat source. We also have two FPGs splitted by a known distance and the airflow going through the wind tunnel. We are also using a pitot tube in order to measure the referency of the velocities. Here's the sensor prototype where the tests were taken inside the wind tunnel at the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. We have the pitot tube, the sensors FPG1 and FPG2, the heat source, and uh, here we have the turbo and the speed control. So we can actually test with different velocities inside our wind tunnel. On this part right here, which is not shown in the picture, we have the FPG, the modulators and interrogators. A closer view is shown on these pictures where we can see the details of the sensors and also the heat source inside the wind tunnel. We have a acrylic tube that works as the wind tunnel, the optical fibers and both FPG1 and FPG2 that can be, see, that can be seen here even closer with a distance of approximately 70 centimeters. Our sensor prototype uh, with this graph demonstrated a repeatability for velocities of two meters per second up to 2%. And for those of nine meters per second, almost 12%. On the other hand, the standard deviations for velocities up to six meters per second demonstrated to be smaller than 5%. And those ones higher than 90 meters per second are up to 10%. As we can see, our sensor presented a linear behavior and good accuracy. Our conclusions, a new methodology to measure volumetric flow rate inside flare ducts based in heat wave travel time, FPG and cross correlation techniques was presented. We also have published an article in IEEE transactions on instrumentation and measurements in July 2020, where we can see making a comparison among between actually our work uh, represented on the last line of this table as the technique of time of flight and the sensor of FPG with the highest velocity achieved. 
as we can see here, comparing among the other authors in the literature, we could, with this sensor, achieve the highest velocity by far. Another conclusion of our team is that our results demonstrate that the system attains the main demands for a flare, showing independence of the gas composition. So it's not dependent of the gas composition as we are using two FPGs. We also achieved good linearity and accuracy and low cost as compared to conventional four meters. If you enjoy the project, you can see the other achievements just accessing this article. My final acknowledgements to Petrobras, which has supported the project with technical and financial supplies, to the Photonics and Instrumentation Laboratory for the opportunity of joining this project, and my family for giving me daily advice to struggle and overcome these tough times we're all going through. Thanks for watching my presentation. Thank you. Bye.